Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I just got done watching episode four of Chucky. <laughs> episode four is entitled Just Let Go. And let me just start off by saying last week I had some issues with episode three. I didn't love the first half of it, but then by the end, it went batshit crazy. This episode, episode four, is my favorite episode so far of the series. I loved this episode for so many reasons. Let's start at the beginning where Jake makes his way over to the hospital. He sees what has happened, the aftermath of the fire at Lexi's house, that party. And you're seeing not only uh, parents grieve over the death of like that one kid who got stabbed. You're seeing other kids who are being checked. And some of them have a lot of smoke in their lungs. Like these kids, this night had some ramifications. This wasn't just like, oh, all these kids are fine. No, it was messed up. Messed up on a lot of levels. Jake is obviously feeling bad and responsible for it as he should. And then Lexi goes up to Jake. Now, I talked about Lexi last week and how I wanted to believe that deep down she was a good person or could be a good person, had the potential to be a good person, to be better than just your typical mean girl, plastic bully that you've seen a hundred times. And this is where I think we got to see it the most. When she's talking to Jake and she's talking about how Chucky did this. He caused the fire. He tried to kill me. And then she says to Jake, like, did you know about Chucky? Oh my God, did you ask him to kill me? And I feel like Jake could have had a better response. I know he was freaking out. I know he was probably scared over the idea of like that getting out there that maybe he did want Lexi to get killed. But I do feel like he could have said to Lexi, look, I didn't tell Chucky to do this. Chucky wanted to kill you on his own because he saw how bad you were bullying me. He saw the stunt that you pulled at that party, dressing up as my father. Chucky decided to kill you on his own. And I he tried to get me to kill you, and I didn't want to. I was waiting for Jake to say that because otherwise, it looks really bad. It does look like Jake told Chucky to do it, or Jake was more of the initiator than he really was. He kind of just let Lexi think that. Lexi is mad at Jake, and honestly, she has every right to be. When she basically tells him to fuck off, uh, she can't really tell anybody because nobody's going to believe her. In fact, there is one scene where she does try to talk to the parents. She doesn't get to say that Chucky did it, but when she mentions Jake's name, they brush her off and say, oh, whatever, you're just a bitch. <laughs> you don't care about anybody but yourself. Jake wasn't even there at the party, which is true. And so she feels helpless. She's like, fuck, I can't tell anybody. And and again, Jake, he he was in a dark place he has issues. He was very vulnerable when Chucky got to him. But Lexi, in this case, has a point. And then Devin goes up to Jake and talks to him. Before this, we saw Devin's mother go and talk to him and ask him questions about, was Jake there at the party? Was Chucky there? And Devin's like, what the fuck? And so Devin goes to tell Jake that the mother was asking about him and the doll. And he even tells him that the boy, Oliver, was that his name? That he was stabbed. I thought maybe the fire would have burned him up and cover up the fact that he was stabbed. Or at least the police weren't going to find that out just yet. But no, they already know that. We get another really... I love this scene, actually. Where the father, uh, or Jake's uncle, Devin Sawa, is so pissed off, so angry, because Junior is is screwed up with, the, with his lungs, he's having trouble breathing, and so he's back there, pissed off, 
the other parents, Lexi's parents, walk by, and Devin Sawa's just going off, man. He's like, fuck you guys. You guys suck as parents. You aren't even a real man. You're a bitch. And then the father tries to act all big and tough. And so Devin Sawa just says, bam, punches him in the face. Super bitch just <laughs> knocks him out. Well, he didn't knock him out. The guy was still standing. But still, I love Devin Zawa right then and there. Uh, great scene. His best scene so far in the series. And then the the cop, uh, Devin's mother, tells both of them that the the other kid was stabbed. So now everybody knows. It's not... Again, I thought things would get dragged out or people wouldn't really know. But no. So far, everybody who needs to know knows that that kid was stabbed and that there's a possible killer on the loose. And then Lexi actually goes to Jake and says, fuck, I'm screwed. I don't have anybody that's going to believe me. All I have is you. And so she says, what do I do? I don't want to go the rest of my life being scared of a doll trying to kill me. I need your help. And Jake says, all right, well, let's go back to your house and look to see if Chucky's still there. Which I I actually didn't think that Chucky would be there because Junior, who was being put under for whatever reason, I don't know what they were doing. I might have missed it. Some was, Were they doing surgery on him or just putting him out? I don't know. But he's, he saw a doll, a Chucky doll, running back and forth in the hallways of the door. Now... I thought it was possible that maybe he was hallucinating. But then again, he didn't really have interactions of seeing Chucky move around. So why would he uh, imagine that? So I thought Chucky was at the hospital. And I thought he was looking for Lexi or he was doing whatever. So then when Lexi and Jake go back to the house and they're looking for Chucky, I thought, okay, well, Chucky's not going to be there. or But he was there. Before we get to there, though, there's a moment where Lexi sees Jake take some pills and she asks him if the pills are for anxiety or depression and Jake says both and she makes a face as if like either she she takes pills like that too for that too or she just understands or maybe she just feels a little bit more bad for him. I'm telling you this is the moment this is the episode where Lexi finally became a human, a human being. Where she wasn't just one dimensional, you know? She got a lot of layers, and my opinion, got a lot of extra points in this episode, became a lot more likable. There might be some people, I saw comments of people in my other reviews for the other episodes who said, no, she's not redeemable, she's a bitch, she deserves to die, I want her dead. I wonder what those people think of Lexi now, if maybe they did win her over or win them over if if maybe they've changed their mind on her now i don't know maybe not maybe so i will look out for those comments um but then you see as they're going up the stairs lexi she kind of can't help it and she questions jake and says like what the fuck dude you tried to have me killed this is and i'm glad Maybe it's not the best time to talk about this, but I am glad that she just didn't let that go because it did seem like she was going to let it go. But to her, this guy wanted her dead. And so she's like, dude, what the fuck? Jake does say, hey, you know, you were a bitch. You were an asshole. You treated me like shit. You made fun of my dead father. Of course I'm going to be upset. And she's like, okay, fine. I get it. You were upset. But like wanting to kill me is a different level. Which, she also has a point. And Jake says, well, it's not like I wanted to just kill anybody. He says, I wanted to kill you. Specifically you. Because you're a terrible, horrible person. And she freaks out. She backs up into the banister and falls off the, the stairs. And Jake catches her. And then, melted, burnt Chucky comes out of the shadows so he was still at the house and this this look of chucky where half of his face is burnt and melted reminded me a lot of child's play three the end of that movie where chucky gets half of his face like ripped off and you see just that look i always thought chucky in child's play three 
that design of when he's all like he looks like Two Face. I always thought that was cool. I always really liked that. So we kind of got some of that here. And Chucky is saying to Jake, "Hey, let the bitch fall. Let go," which is the name the name of the episode. Just let go. Let her fall. I'll do the work. I'll kill her for you, just like you wanted. She deserves it. Blah blah blah. Lexi's very hysterical, and I don't know if Jake was thinking about it, but he says, "No, I'm not a killer. Thank God. This is the Jake that I." wanted in the last week's episode i didn't even want him to contemplate it but okay fine we're past that point but when it counts when it matters he says no i'm not gonna let her die um i'm not gonna be like you he helps her up chucky says well i'll do it myself god damn it and so he him jumping up with the knife trying to stab her feet and her legs was kind of hilarious and then a cop shows up and is like, hey, who's in there? Chucky just falls and sits there like a doll. Which sometimes I wonder, it was only one cop. So Chucky probably could have just ran over and killed the cop right then and there. Especially given what happens later on with that cop. But okay, fine. So he sits down. The cop comes in, sees the kids, tell them that they have to leave. Grabs the doll, says that the sister wants the doll. And so he drives them to the hospital kind of weird that they're in the back seat and they're just quiet the entire time until when they park and then he grabs the doll to leave that's when they say oh no wait please don't, don't. <laughs> it's like why weren't you saying anything the entire car ride <laughs> i mean maybe they were may or maybe i don't know maybe there should have been a scene where they did try to say like look you can't bring that doll there's something wrong with it. Like something to where they tried to and the guy wasn't having it. Because otherwise it just looked silly. So he leaves. The cop leaves. They can't get out. Devin's mom shows up. Opens the door. Takes Jake with her. Right? To question him some more. Lexi has another nice moment where she says to Jake, Hey, thank you for not letting go. And I swear, this is the moment where Lexi, I think, will become more of an ally to Jake, will become a nicer person. I hope so anyways. I hope it's just not like she'll just end up going back to being a bitch. Like, I hope they keep her going down this path. And and so, yeah, I'm completely cool with it. She Lexi goes into the hospital. She goes to her sister's room. She asks the nurse, hey, did anybody come here with a doll? Nurse says no. She's looking around. And then she goes, Devin goes to her and says, hey, I need to look for Jake. I have stuff about Chucky. She says what? Because obviously she knows. So they go off and talk about Charles Lee Ray and blah, blah, blah. Which, mind you, I guess I didn't mention the fact that Devin Googled the Chucky doll. And we got a lot of, we got a picture of Tiffany from Bride of Chucky. I don't know how that picture was out there because that picture was actually from a scene with Tiffany and Chucky alone at the beginning of the movie. But okay, fine. I'm I'm nitpicking. And then they even showed uh, Nika, Fiona Durf's character from Curse of Chucky. Uh, they said that she escaped the hospital. So we're definitely setting up that those characters aren't done, that they are going to come back. And so her and Devin talk about that. And as Devin's mom is talking to, to Jake, and he's, he seems like he's about to come clean about the doll, which makes you wonder what the mom would have said or what her reaction would have been. She probably wouldn't have believed him, but I'm just curious if maybe for a second she might have believed him just because she does, she has been hearing the fact that the doll has been at every crime scene. And then, just then, the power at the hospital starts going crazy. Uh, I didn't mention earlier, the cop, the cop that brings the Chucky doll to Caroline's room, he puts the doll on top of the thing, and this guy, this fat-ass guy, <laughs> and I call him a fat-ass because he's rummaging around all of the snacks that are clearly there for this little girl. This little girl who's in a hospital bed. Unconscious. I mean who knows how she, she'll be. 
And this cop is just eating donuts, eating cookies, eats a piece of brownie. And it's not even the fact that he eats these items. He takes one bite of each item and then puts them back into the box. That made me say, fuck this guy. Chucky, do your worst. Kill him. Kill him now. <laughs> I feel like this cop deserved to die more than anybody else in the series. <laughs> Chucky of course I, th I think Chucky was feeling the same way he probably saw all of this and said dude fucking gross takes a, a scalpel whatever it was throws it at the cop's spine and like paralyzes him the guy falls backwards and then thing goes further into his back so that doesn't help now he does say on the ground oh my god I can't move but when Chucky comes over to him and starts stabbing him with a bunch of needles, why didn't the cop yell out, like, fucking help me, somebody? Yes, he's paralyzed, but he could clearly talk. It's just, it was weird that he wasn't screaming out for help. I mean, was he in shock over seeing a doll move and talk and kill him? Maybe. But at the same time, I think it would have been... It would have made sense if, like, maybe he went to scream and Chucky, like, put something in his mouth, like, put food in his mouth to cover it so that he didn't scream. I don't know. I I overthink some of these scenes sometimes. I also love the fact that Chucky said, I just don't like your face. <laughs> I just, I want to kill you because your face annoys me. Of course, he looks in the reflection, sees how fucked up he is. Maybe I'm projecting. And then, back to where the power goes out. Uh, everybody runs to the sister's room and sees that her thing was unplugged. So I guess Chucky tried to kill Caroline, which is surprising. I don't know if he was just angry or if he's like, well, fuck, if I can't kill Lexi, I'm going to do the next best thing and kill her sister to get to her. I don't know, because I was surprised that Chucky went after the sister since she was always nice to him. But then everybody goes to the room. I'm waiting for them to react to the dead body right next to the bed. Nobody's reacting to it. The nurses. I'm like, wait, did Chucky clean up this body? What? Finally, they see the blood. They see the body. They scream. They're freaking out. I love the last shot of this episode. Where uh, Jake, Lexi, and even Devin now. Devin is seeing Chucky move. All three of them look at Chucky, and he says, fuck you. Well, he doesn't say it, but he puts up the middle finger, basically saying, fuck you guys. I'm coming after all of you now. I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was great. Like I said, favorite episode so far of the series. There was also a moment um, I'll mention really quick. We saw flashbacks of a teenage Chucky where we saw that he killed, was that the janitor at the orphanage uh, school or whatever the hell it was. I don't know, but I did appreciate the actor who played teenage Chucky. I thought that the actor looked like a young Brad Dourif or a young Charles Lee Ray. I thought that was good casting. And, and it was pretty messed up how he was sort of trying to coerce that young child to also become a killer as well. I don't know if he succeeds or what happens with that kid. And... And um, and also, what was I going to say about that? I was going to say something about, uh, something else about that flashback. Oh, when young Charles was taking those kids out to the woods, for a second I thought he was going to kill all of those kids. <laughs> that would have been probably too much. I don't know. I don't know if this show has the balls to do that. But they didn't. He revealed to them the body. It was like, stand by me. And so, yeah, there you go. That was the episode. Just Let Go. I really enjoyed it. Great, great episode. I can't wait for next week. It looks like next week we're definitely getting Tiffany and Nika, possessed Nika. And also, it looks like we're going to get multiple dolls. So that should be interesting. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below. What did you think of episode four of Chucky? Did you like it as much as I did? Did you love it? Or maybe you just, you're not digging the show. Maybe you don't like the show at all. Let me know why. What do you think of Lexi? I definitely want you guys' opinions on Lexi now. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!